Welcome to the first postseason edition of the Bobby Kremen Show. Of course, along with Coach Kremens of the College of Charleston Cougars, I'm Nate Gross, your host. Coach, I got to ask, I got I to ask the tough ones. Tough weekend in Chattanooga for you guys. Oh, oh Nate, it was a tough weekend. Um, first of all, you know, the big prize in our conference is that, that ticket to punch a ticket to the big dance. And um, uh, once again, we came up short. We almost didn't get to the finals this year. Furman played a great semifinal game. Uh, but, Nate, I want to congratulate Wofford, uh, Mike Young, the Wofford Terriers once again will represent our conference in the NCAA tournament. They almost upset Wisconsin yep. last year. And uh, everybody in our conference will be pulling hard for the Terriers of Wofford to make another great show in the big dance. we got great games to look at. Elon, then Furman, and, of course, then Wofford in the finals. We'll look at the highlights right now. Coach, first game, the Elon Phoenix and Coach Matheny. Well, Nate, you know, we only played Elon once this year. Um, they're in the North Division, and that game was at Elon. Yep. And that guy had an incredible game to give us a victory there. Uh, Elon is a very dangerous team. You mentioned Matt Matheny, longtime assistant for Bobby McKillop at Davidson. Good ball movement, good swing in the ball, and, and we get a beautiful jump shot there. Nate, uh, you know, we're coming off of two losses going into this game, which was very, very worrisome. Yep. And, um, and we came out on fire. We really, we really wanted to advance. And we did a great job of moving the ball. And we knew this first game, you know, you lose the first game, it's all over. Uh, beautiful move by Willis Hall there. And I felt bad for Willis. Uh, he had a tough tournament, and he shoots an important uh, part of our team, and he shoots a great kid. But you see the ball movement. We're going to go on uh, for a great victory. Uh, and an important victory because, as, as you know, in this tournament, you lose and you go home. And there you see Donovan Monroe on a beautiful uh, post-up move. And this was just a, a good feeling for our team, Nate, again, um, strictly because we're coming off of uh, two losses. And, Nate, I was worried. Uh, I knew, you know, if we continue to play like we did, we would have absolutely no chance. I love that pass by Trent Wiedemann to our great shooter, Andrew Godlock. And again, Andrew Godlock stepped up. He knows, he knows the Cougars go as he goes. Yep. And when he gets it going, they look at Monroe, beautiful pass. Everybody else seems to fall in place. Um, you know, he can have a, a, a poor game. Oh, I shouldn't say a poor game. He can have an off night and we can still win. But right. if he has a really bad night, um, it, it's really tough for us to win. And um, Donovan, uh, great anticipation, great finish. And, and again, Nate, you know, we, we take care of business. And, you know, you watch these tournaments, uh, conference tournaments, every year that first day is always a tough one. Uh, UNC Greensboro, they upset uh, Davidson um, in the first round. And we all know what Davidson and Bob and McKillop, they're, they're tough to beat. So anything can happen, Nate. And again, we go on for our first win and we advance, and uh, we play Furman. We're going to be playing Furman now. And uh, Furman, the most improved team in our conference. Um, Jeff Jackson, you know, I, I won Coach of the Year. And had, I think had he won one more game, he probably would have been Coach of the Year. Uh, big game. Uh, Furman's coming off of a great win uh, the previous night. Yep, they, they had a great win to get to the quarterfinals and, of course, play you guys. And you've been in a lot of basketball games. You ever had a greater comeback than this one? This um, was unbelievable. This was a great one. Furman, Furman was up for this tournament. And um, they were ready to play. And they outplayed us, Nate. Uh, they did. Jeff had his team ready. And right now, we're hanging in there. And uh, of course, Godlock, again, he's such a, a, a key part of our team. And when his shooting is on, it's just wonderful. But, um, you know, the first half goes fairly according to script. Uh, we knew it would be a tough game. We know they had some great shooters. Uh, we know about soccer. Um, and, you know, uh, there's a beautiful move. Um, Jordan James, Miller at the point, of course. Yeah. And they played 11 bodies in the first half. Yes. Um, you know, and Jeff does a great job. But, um, we, you know, we, we play well. They see, I love when Donovan. Now, Nate, we're going to get into a little bit of a shock th treatment here. Furman is just going to strictly outplay us. And they're going to take control of this basketball game. And we're in trouble. We're in serious trouble. 
and now the pressure really builds. Uh, one thing we had on our favor at this point, Nate, was time. Yep. There was still plenty of time left. Beautiful drive and, and pull up jump shot by Monroe. But Nate, you know, uh, we're in seriously trouble and we got some fans there in Chattanooga. And I should mention, again, Furman upset the host team yep. to, to play in the semifinal. Everybody thought it was going to be Charleston and uh, Chattanooga. Chattanooga, the number one seed in the North. Uh, Trent Reedman with a great follow. Now, Nate, now we make a great comeback. And look, look at that tipping. Now we're playing some basketball. Now we feel like we can win again. And now we go on a tear. Beautiful move by um, Antoine Wiggins. And Nate, we're going to go on for a great comeback victory. And of course, that comeback victory puts us in the finals. Uh, national TV, ESPN2, against the defending tournament champion, the Wofford Terriers. And, and Nate, um, first half, uh, we did not play well. But, you know, everything is fun. Um, we're we're going to uh, go into the halftime with a four-point lead um, because of the play that you're watching. And, um, you know, Wofford, you could just tell Nate uh, early on, they're playing with confidence. They look like they've been there. Great anticipation by Donovan and a beautiful steal. And again, it's a, it's a great basketball game. Uh, both teams are not, they're not playing great, but we're fighting each other, playing defense. Monroe gets hot. It's like a heavyweight fight. It is, it is. Um, and we're feeling each other. And, you know, Nate, this is, this is you know, everything that's at stake here. This is a championship game. And, you know, the nerves are going to be different. Uh, things are going to be different. Wofford has the edge because of experience. They got their seniors and they've been here. And of course, this is where we want to go. And, you know, we go into the locker room with a two, with a four point lead. The second half, things really get, it really gets intense. And as you can see, it's, it's a tight, bat. look at that beautiful pass, uh, beautiful shot. But Nate, I, I could just tell, you know, Wofford is playing smarter. Um, we're struggling a little bit. Uh, great play by Donovan, and he gets fouled. At this point, this point, I really felt, you know, we had a great chance to win. Uh, but beautiful move by Donovan there. Uh, but, you know, Wofford is never going to quit. And, and now, Nate, you know, again, it's anybody's game. Um, there's so much excitement at this point. It's a great play there, great follow-up. Uh, just great attacking of the boards. And, and Nate, you know, the, the, these next several minutes are just, you know, really intense basketball. What a move. What a, what a move by Dahlman. What a head fake there. Yep. That was that. Um, That's Diggs. Diggs. And Diggs played a great game. Yes, he did. And, and, the, and their other guard. Rundles. Cameron Rundles. Rundles had a heck of a game. Yeah. And now, Nate, all of a sudden, you know, again, it's anybody's game at this point. And, you know, we're just looking. Every, both teams are looking for that edge. Great ball movement, Andrew. But right now we're down. We're down. Wofford has taken a little bit, a little bit control of the yep. game, and uh, they're going to go on for a great victory. And they they played great down the stretch. And, they, and again, congratulations to Mike Young, a great guy, a great coach, and a class program in the Wofford Terriers. Well, coach, you're absolutely correct about the Wofford Terriers. But one thing is for certain: the College of Charleston's basketball season is not over, and we'll talk about that in a minute. When we picked our AT&T play of the week, it was tough, but we're going to go back to the semifinals against the Furman Paladins for this week's AT&T play of the week. Our AT&T play of the week always ends with a score, but it starts with great defense. Antoine Wiggins with the great on the ball steal and watch Antoine in the bottom of your screen. Shot goes up, it's missed. He goes around Jordan Miller. Great offensive rebound, great put back, two for the Cougars. It starts with defense. It ends with a great offensive rebound. Donovan Monroe up the floor, looking for, of course, Andrew Gallock for the three, and you'll see Antoine come underneath, around the defensive player with a great offensive board, and a little enthusiasm as well for the Cougs. Here's the end of it, around Jordan Miller, who doesn't seal him out, and he just wants it, worse than Jordan Miller wants to keep him out, and a great putback. Antoine Wiggins, our AT&T Play of the Week. Today was the day that I put everything in perspective I fell asleep but when I woke up everything changed and the skies turned off that was before that was before you came along and you played me a 
sweet song with a little bit of love and a little bit of yeah, yeah. In the network, coverage is a beautiful thing. AT&T covers 97% of Americans. Welcome back once again to the Bobby Kremen Show, and this is Cougar Conversations, brought to you by our great friends at Coca-Cola, and got to bring in the head Cougar to talk for Cougar Conversations this year, Mr. Joe Hall, the Director of Athletics here at the College of Charleston, of course. And there's two things we know, Joe. Regular season's over, and the Cougars are in the NIT. We'll talk about the specifics of the NIT in general, but everybody's asking me, so I might as well ask you, do we know anything about who or when or where or that kind of stuff? Well, let me just say how proud I am of the guys first. For They've tried so hard the last three years. Everybody's really disappointed, but we're going to go try to do the very best we can at NIT and represent the college in a great way. In terms of what we know, we have filled out the contracts. We've signed all the paperwork. We've also requested an opportunity to host if, if they're willing to do that. But the truth is, I, I don't know who knows what elsewhere, but as far as what I know, I don't know who we're going to play, I don't know when we're going to play, and I don't know what time we're going to play. Well, you're going to see the show on Saturday, and on Sunday night at 9 p.m. on ESPNU will be the NIT selection show, and all those questions will be answered at that time. Now, when you say you signed the contracts, as soon as the regular season was over and you knew you were in the NIT, if you don't win the tournament, is that when that process began and all that kind of stuff? Uh, They sent the paperwork to us probably two weeks ago, and we had several days. The deadline fell about the time that the Southern Conference Tournament ended. Now, unlike past years, in 2005, the NIT tournament was bought by the NCAA and run by coaches, very different, C.M. Newton, and of course people in Charleston, there Les Robinson on the committee. Yep. And how does that change how the selection happens about who's in it? Now, obviously, we have an automatic bid, but all the teams don't. Um, I, I was a part of the NIT, both at NC State and Maryland in the old days under the old format. Um, now, I understand the coaches choose. Uh, they have the automatics, and that's a major change from what we had before. Uh, other than that, as far as I know, they just go try to find the very finest teams that did not make the NCAA tournament to put them in a tournament. That's why they wait till the selection is over to figure right. out who those bubble teams were that didn't make it, and then those bubble teams end up with the next prize, which is the NIT. And the old rule used to be, before the NCAA bought it, you had to have a 500 record to be eligible to play in it. That does not That is not the case anymore, but... As I read on the internet, last year there were no teams below 500. So they're picking the best of the best of what's left. And that, that stuff about it's the 66 team when there were 65, that's baloney. Because the NCAA is going to pick the automatics and then obviously the, um, the at-large teams. And then the NIT is a great field. And people uh, maybe don't understand, but if the Cougars win a couple games, you get to play in Madison Square Garden. That's a pretty cool trip. Yeah, well... Uh, uh, no matter how you do it, it's special to play in Madison Absolutely. Square Garden. Had the opportunity when I was at Maryland. We won, I believe, three games and then got to the Garden uh, under that old format. Um, and, and to be honest with you, we were at Madison Square Garden, and all the old great Maryland players just showed up out of the woodwork from everywhere. So being in Madison Square Garden is a special place to play, uh, a special place in the history of college basketball. And, you, you know, you talked about the great effort by the Cougars this year, and we got to make mention of the fact the last 11 games, they did this without Jeremy Simmons. And did what they did. And I told somebody the other day, take Noah Domino off Wofford's team and see if they even make it to the finals. I mean, it was an amazing accomplishment by everybody else in the basketball team. And from what I've been told, Jeremy might be able to just stand at practice in the next week or two. And it'd just be great for the kids to see him standing there. Obviously, he's fine. He's going to be fine for the rest of his basketball career, however far that goes in the professional ranks. Um, but it's an amazing accomplishment by, the, by coaches and players. Um, it's a very resilient group, Nate. You're around them a lot. You get to see how terrific those young people are. Uh, I can't tell you how much respect I have and how proud I am of what they've accomplished. Uh, they're disappointed. They wish it was different than it is. Sure. Uh, but to, to given the, the, the curveballs, the hurdles they've had to jump over, what a great job. By not just the players, but by the coaches. Uh, I'm not sure I've seen Bobby work harder. He wanted this so badly. The assistant coaches wanted it so badly. Uh, they've spent so much time and energy to get here. Um, and they gave it everything they had. Uh, ultimately, I guess it was the foul trouble that was the hurdle that we right. couldn't quite get over 
our depth was a little short and the foul trouble was was difficult to overcome. And we've both seen a lot of basketball games. Have you ever seen a better comeback than in the semifinals against Furman? Um, I, I told the guys, I said, you know, the level of toughness and the level of defense that they demonstrated in that in that semifinal uh, made me so proud uh, of the just the resiliency uh, of the young man. It was great. And all the questions will be answered Sunday, 9 o'clock, ESPNU, NIT Selection Show. Joe Hull, thank you very much for joining us on Cougar Conversations. We'll be back with a lot more to Bobby Kremen Show right after these messages. Welcome back once again to the Bobby Kremen Show. Now it's a chance to look at next week's opponent and a look around the NCAA brought to you by our great friends at Piggly Wiggly. But first... Everybody's asking me, I gotta ask you. Jeremy's doing great out here. Yeah, I'm really proud of Jeremy Simmons. Um, as we know, about a month ago, um, he developed a blood clot in his arm and was out for the year. And it, that was really a depressing moment. And I'm so proud of the team, the way they responded. And, and I'm so proud of Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy plans to graduate this semester. That's great. And um, he's gotta stay on top of his books. Um, he's had a couple of procedures. And we're hoping here in the next week or so he can start working out, maybe jogging. Um, he wants to play professionally. Uh, he'll have a lot of opportunities overseas. Um, so right now um, he's doing well, Nate. Um, obviously uh, uh, we miss him uh, playing, uh, but we're very proud of the way he's handled his um, injury situation. Great to just see him on the practice yeah. court if he's just standing yeah. there in a uniform again. Okay, Joe Holt talked to us about the NIT and the procedures and all that stuff. You've been involved with the people that run that tournament for many, many years. Yeah. Um, give us a little <laughs> behind the scenes stuff. What's good? What, what do you think is going to happen? Well, the NIT, you know, uh, as Joe alluded to, uh, the NCAA took it over. Right. And, and, and that's a big step. Um, I had this crazy idea. I really believed in order to make the NIT really special that the winner of the NIT should get an automatic bid to next year's uh, big dance. And everybody said, well, Bobby, that's ridiculous. What if they're all seniors and they stink the following year? <laughs> I said, no problem. They get the last bid. It's right. that simple. Yep. But what it would do, it would generate incredible True. interest uh, for the NIT. And I would love to see that happen. And I think it would become a very prestigious tournament. Nate, it's going to be seeded, as Joe talked about. Right. And who's going to get the top seed? It's going to be those teens who are really going to be disappointed that they did not get into the big dance. It's going to be those teams who deserve to be in the big dance, but we just don't now have enough room. There's close to 350 Division I schools. And there was a, there was a point last year where we were going to take it to 96 teams. It went from 64 five to, to 68. Right. So, Nate, there's going to be three to six, seven teams who have had great seasons, but did not play well down the stretch. And they're gonna get left out of the big dance. Uh, the big dance, of course, we have the automatic, and, and then you have the at-large bids. So Nate, whoever those teams are, they will get the top seeds. Then teams like College of Charleston, Coastal Carolina uh, will fill out. Uh, we have the automatic bid because we won our regular season um, to, uh, conference play. So it's going to be exciting. It will all take place r immediately after uh, the NCAA selection. There will be a room that, for the NCAA in Indianapolis and there will be another room right next door. And as soon as room one is finished, room two will start up and they will put together the NIT. They will telephone us, tell us who our opponent is, where we'll be playing, and we'll go from there. It will start immediately. We will play, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday. Correct. Uh, prior to uh, the NCAA. They work around the NCAA. But again, you know, I'm a strong proponent of expanding the NCAA tournament. And it, that will not happen. I thought a year ago it was going to happen. Um, but since it's not going to happen, I'm an even stronger opponent of let's make this NIT a special tournament. Let's, let's you know, so I have to be honest, even on the show, a lot of people call it the non-invitational tournament. And, and that upsets me because there are some great teams in it. There are, there are teams who go in it that really don't want to be in it because 
And you know what? In a way, we're one of those teens because we had a dream of going to the big dance. And we got to re regenerate, rejuvenate ourselves. So I would love to see it become more meaningful, uh, put an automatic bid in it, and let's go play some serious basketball. Now, sort of analogous to the regular season. You lose your last two regular season games. Yeah. You have a great week of practice. Yeah. You get them ready for the tournament. You lost the, in the finals of the tournament. You kind of got to do the same thing again. Yeah, we took a few days off, and now we're regrouping. And uh, uh, again, we, you know, we, right now we don't feel great about the NIT because we're so disappointed to come so close. But we'll, we'll recapture some things. Nate, it's a great opportunity for me uh, to work on some things, X and O wise, yep. playing kids for next year. So it'll all, be, it'll all come down to who we're playing and what we're doing. But Nate, we're very proud that we, we are now going to the NIT and we look forward to playing well. How excited can you get your guys to think you get a little run, you get to go to Madison Square Garden? Uh, we'd love to go to the garden, Nate. I could get to go home <laughs> to where I grew up. Well, Coach, there's a lot of fans who would love to make that journey with you as well. We'll be back to wrap up this week's show right after these messages. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Bobby Kremen Show as we close out this week's segment. There's a lot of things we don't know. There's definitely things we do know. Number one, the Cougars will play at least one more game. It will be in the NIT. You will find out who, where, and when on Sunday night at 9 p.m. on ESPNU, the NIT selection show. The first game will be the 15th or the 16th of March. We'll find all that stuff out then. Um, the Cougars had a phenomenal regular season. It was a very exciting tournament. They did not take home the prize they wanted, as Coach Kremens alluded to many times. And the players feel the same way. But there's an NIT tournament. They have a chance to play in it. And if they get a run going, they have a chance to go to Madison Square Garden, where the final four teams will go to decide the 2011 NIT champion. It's been a great regular season. We hope it's a great postseason. And we'll talk about it next week on The Bobby Kremens Show.